what is going on all of my current, future, and inspiring nurses as well as my healthcare professionals alike. I hope you all are having a wonderful day. Today I wanted to touch base on test taking strategies for the ATITs because I get these questions a whole lot. to do this video because I get these questions a lot because as if completing your prerequisites aren't stressful enough, now you've got to take this ATIT's examination in order to get into nursing school. And I get it. We've all been there. We've all had to do it. It's stressful. I understand. But my number one advice for people that are looking to get into the nursing profession that are coming out of high school that already know they want to be a nurse is to take the T's as soon as you can because a lot of the T's, um, testing uh, strategies as well as questions are a lot of things that you actually find on the ACT. So if you get out quick enough and you finish your health sciences quick enough, I say go for it, get in there mama daddy and make sure that you take your T's examination to get a good score and to see how well you do and what you need to work on in the future. So my tip number one for you is to make sure that you answer every single question that is on ATITs as well as making educated guesses regarding questions that you might not know the answer to. So what exactly does that mean? That means that every single question that is on that test you make sure that you answer. It is better to answer a question and potentially get it right than to not answer a question and be penalized for it because you ran out of time and you didn't answer the question. Next, make an educated guess. So what exactly is an educated guess? It is having an idea about the correct answer versus making an uneducated guess about choosing an answer at random. So statistically, if you make an educated guess, you're more likely to get the answer correct. But I keep saying this and you have no idea what I'm talking about. So here's what I'm talking about. An educated guess that you choose at random has a one in four chance of being correct. That means you have a 25% chance of answering that question correctly. However, if you start eliminating answers that are wrong, then your chances of answering that question go up. Um, I should say answering that questions correctly goes up. So if you eliminate one an wrong answer, that is a 33% chance of the answer that you answer being right. If you eliminate at least two answers, then you have a 50-50 chance of that question being right or that question being wrong. So whenever you're looking at the test, you need to start looking at your answers and you need to read the question, read the passage, or read whatever it is that you need to read and start eliminating those answers that you know are incorrect. Another great tip is to answer the easy questions first on the ATIT's examination and go ahead and mark those tough questions to return to those later. So what exactly does that mean? If you get stuck on a hard question and you're sitting there for quite a bit of time trying to figure out what exactly the question is, then you're wasting time in regards to easy answers that you could have answered first. So go through the entire exam section by section and answer all of the easy questions first. Then mark down your tough questions that you're having some problems with and return to those questions later. This will actually help in regards to your time and it'll cost a little bit of a less stressful situation when you're taking ATITs because guess what? It's already stress enough. Be instinctive and listen to your gut. When you're taking nursing examinations, when you eventually get into the nursing program, you're going to have questions that you're going to go, what the heck is this? I don't remember reading this, but I think this might be the right answer. If your gut is telling you that that is the right answer with the ATIT's examination, nine times out of ten, that is the right answer. So listen to your gut. You can go ahead and mark it, but when you go back, just Really, if you can't come up with a reason why some other answer is more correct than the other one, then stick with that answer and move on. My next tip is to understand what exactly the question is asking and make sure that you avoid those decoy answers that the ATI places in there. So to begin with, what exactly is the question asking? For example, if you're looking at a question that is in regards to gasoline, you're looking for an answer that has gallons in it, not something that's got liters or miles per hour or whatever the case may be. If it's regarding the gasoline specifically, you're looking for an answer that is in regards to gallons. And again, you want to avoid decoy answers with the ATITs. Most questions may have one to two incorrect answers, at least one correct answer, and then one probable answer. So you want to start with a specific algorithm for answering questions. You're going to, one, start eliminating the wrong answers immediately. Cut those out, mark those off, those are wrong. Two, you want to consider the two answers that are left, the one probable and the one correct answer. And then lastly, if you're not able to identify the correct answer and you just can't figure it out, use your instincts, listen to your gut, and make sure that you make an educated guess. 
So another great tip and one that I think is probably the most important in regards to taking the ATIT's examination is you want to be aware of the clock and you want to make sure you have enough time to review your questions. So being aware of the time, if you are taking the English and language portion of the test, that means you have 28 questions and 28 minutes. At the 10 minute mark of taking that portion of the test, you want to have at least 10 to 13 questions answered. If you have anything lower than that, then you need to move it, brothers and sisters, because that ATA um, T's test is not going to be waiting for you. So make sure that you are well enough ahead and make sure that you're aware of the clock. You always want to aim to have spare time, whether that is to go back to review your answers or if you had a little bit of a problem with some of those tougher questions, as I said before, you've got enough time to go back and review those answers and to answer them correctly with an education guess. So lastly, one of my most important tips is to avoid making mistakes when you're taking your ATIT's examination and to be better prepared. So how do we become better prepared? We want to make sure that we eat a very good breakfast a day of the testing. Your brain needs fuel to work efficiently in answering questions. It's a lot of questions. It's 170 questions, 20 of which don't even matter, but 150 of which really matter. So you need to make sure that you eat a good, healthy breakfast, something that's not excessively over sugar because again you're gonna have a really high spike and then all of a sudden you're gonna just drop in the middle of that test so have a really good and filling breakfast do not and I repeat do not cram this information for the test if you cram this information I promise you ladies and gentlemen you're probably not gonna do well um, the ATIT's test is very broad um, expansive and it's just a general um, practice of questions. You're not really going to be able to cram this information. You really need to understand what the information is asking you and testing you on. So if you cram this information and you go in knowing that you cram this information, you're just probably not going to do well. Trust me, the first time I took the ATITs, I failed it because I tried to cram it and it was just a big mistake and I learned from it. Like I said before, do not have a poor outlook on this test as well as being overconfident about taking this test. Like I said before, I went into my first test, crammed all the information, I was extremely confident, I walked in there like, I got this, I don't have to take this test again, it's going to be a one time, hit it, quit it, and then I'm out. But then I ended up learning that I was overconfident and I did not have any clue what I was testing on and I failed it miserably the first time. So make sure that you respect the test, know that it's going to be difficult, know that you really have to prepare for it, and don't be overconfident. It's okay to not understand or not know things. This is the reason why you look up this information. This is the reasons that you watch my video. It's going to be okay. We're going to get through this. I promise. I passed it on my second try. And my last thing, ladies and gentlemen, is to not stress out about taking this test. If you go in and you stress out, you kind of psych yourself out in your head and you're not as prepared as you think you are, even though you are prepared, and then you keep taking the test and you keep failing, and then you start looking for these YouTube videos to help you. But really, if you understand the information and you have studied appropriately, there's no reason to stress. You're going to be fine, and I promise you will get through this. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any other questions regarding test taking strategies for this examination, please leave them down below. I would love to hear from you all and I hope you all are having a wonderful day and I will talk to you again soon, I promise, for more information regarding the ATIT's testing. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.